So hi there, I'm Ernest Homeyer. And I'm Kathy Omar. <laughs> and uh, we operate the Lake Clear Lodge and Resort. It's the longest operating great camp in the entire Adirondack Park, uh, just about 140 years, uh, built by Kathy's family as a stagecoach in uh, back in the 1800s, as well as an uh, interesting library slash speakeasy in the 1920s. So we have a combination of a, an original great camp building, uh, that houses our Adirondack Alps restaurant, as well as 25 acres of different amenities, including lodgings. Because we began as a stagecoach inn, we do stagecoach rides at sunset that takes you through the woods and down to the beach. And with that experience, we always emphasize a local cuisine built by Kathy's family who started this back in the 1800s. So we're very fortunate to have a whole bunch of original menus that really was about local food because a hundred years ago, it was all about local food. We've worked with local food before it was cool to do. Like I said, we with my specialty in looking and learning about traditional food preparations. That's how we created our whole thing. Was I looked at traditional food, you know, worldwide and how that played a part in people's nutrition. But then, wait a minute, what about the Adirondacks and how do people prepare food here and how did they do it during the Cure Cottage and what foods did they use there locally? I also do workshops and demonstrations. I developed a program called Nutritional Energetics, so I do the lead in with food, you know, like the dandelions that are out in the spring. That's what your liver needs to rejuvenate it itself from after the winter. Seasonal and local is going to do that where you are. The one thing that happened to the Adirondacks that I don't think we actually say enough of is how many different kinds of people actually went through here. It was the Native Americans that started the whole thing. Um, the Native Americans saved in many cases the original pioneers. Uh, there was a relationship there. But I think then during the late 1800s and the early 1900s with the whole cure cottage, i.e. the cure for tuberculosis, we became known as the Healing Woods. But what that brought was all all these different kinds of people that I think would not have traditionally been up here. They were the composers, the intellects, the politicians, but it brought a whole eclectic crew here that brought their own traditions of food to this area. While I don't know if you can say that there's a specific cuisine, like a Creole cuisine, I do think what you can say is that it is very farm to fork based, it's very nature based, and it's filled with lots of different ingredients from lots of different people and cultures that really make this a really rich experience uh, that I, I think we need to tell the story more of. Yeah, we've always worked kind of like I, I say, I call them the older farmers, but the farmers who have been here for a long time. They deliver out here. They know I'm interested. Um, I've connected through Adirondack Harvest, but I'll throw through just, just connections with the Weston Price Foundation and the work that I used to do with that. I would say in a nutshell, we work with them on three levels. One is as a food resource, but from a, on a second level, uh, we also work with them on an educational basis. We learn a lot about how they grow things, why they grow things a certain way, and in return, we try to tell that story. And then the third way is on the whole agritourism end of it. You know, how can we collectively work together to promote our businesses um, that really tell the story of how rich we are in different food resources, uh, different food culture, and uh, I think from that perspective, we've got one heck of a story. So my role here at the Lake Clare Lodge is providing year-round horse-drawn services for their guests and to the public. So we do stagecoach rides and wagon rides in the summer and fall months. And in the wintertime, we do sleigh rides. I enjoy the people. A lot of people have never been around horses before and they're always really excited when I tell them they can pet the horses or give them treats at the end of their ride. And there's just a lot of people that come here that have never been around such gentle, calm animals. There's something about horses that people are fascinated with. If it weren't for the lodge, I don't know where I would be in this business because they really helped me get my start and now I'm starting to expand a little bit and offering other activities in the area. On our property we have what we call the shed, um, but it's a separate building um, that's a CSA and some people go, what is a CSA? Well, it's a community supported agriculture, but generally people buy shares and they can come and get produce and meat. This one is done by Whitten Family Farm and people come in and get their shares, but people can also like our guests here on the property and know they can just drop in and put their dollars in the, <laughs> in the jar and have some fresh produce. Then Kathy takes those products and then she does everything from where you can pick up just soups, you can pick up just a main entree, you can pick up desserts, um, but that we use those products as well as from the old local farms for those people that want to have a, an actual meal they can just heat up. A lot of times people will sit there and go, wow, this is really good. 
And then they get to know, oh, oh you've done this and you've done that, and um, you know, you get some local food. Um, there's certainly people out there, you know, aware and people becoming more and more aware when we see the food chains interrupted um, and things like that, that it's more important. Um, I think it's certainly a growing educational thing that still needs to be done. I used to talk about it years ago and people would kind of look at me cross-eyed and now I look to talk about local food and how to repair or how to do it. The great news is it's a, it's a, there's a growing recognition how important it is, but both with younger people, which is really exciting to us, uh, because they seem to be really interested in both a sense of place when they come, but they're more and more interested about food resources and they're trying to very hard, I think, to do the right thing. And while it still may not be the main reason why they come, I do think it's a growing factor for them to come. I do think that if you are truly going to get yourself rejuvenated by the Adirondack spirit, and immerse yourself for all the power that's here from a natural standpoint, food is from the earth and food will also help to revitalize you. I think that food, because it comes from a special place, is special in itself.